In my remarks, I will not go back of 1861. On April 12, Fort Sumner in Charleston Harbor was bombarded by our Southern brothers, who thought the election of Abraham Lincoln meant the taking away from them the rights and liberties their forefathers had left them. Therefore, they wished to withdraw from the Union and govern themselves. The North would not allow anything of the kind. Hence the Civil War, where 400,000 of our Northern citizens laid down their lives that the Union might be preserved. For more than four years, this war lasted, and at its close, Garfield and Logan conceived the idea of a national holiday for the reunion of the Grand Army. With the aid of Congress, the 30th of May was declared to be the national holiday forever and requested us to assemble on that day of each year in memory of the fallen defenders of the Union and place flowers upon their graves. I hope each generation will follow this example and not forget that only for the suffering of these old veterans with us today and those who sleep in the silent beyond, we would not be today living in the fairer and prosperous nation that we are. It is becoming quite rare to see the little bronze button in the lapel of the coat, and the day is close at hand when a veteran of that great civil war will stand as a lone monument marking the decay of a generation that has passed away. I wish to say to the young folks here today to always treat with respect the old soldier whenever you meet him. Remember that they were called upon to decide between unconditional submission or resistance by force. With what undaunted courage they made the noble choice, and having made it, with what unshrinking fortitude they met all the reverses of fortune, the ebb and flow of the tide of war, the discontent of the factions, the fears of the timid, never cast down by repeated misfortunes, nor too much elated by momentary success, when the sword fell from their fainting hands and the blank of despair seemed falling on their hearts, still did these patriots struggle on, still did they find confidence in their just cause, and with the eyes of the pole star of liberty did they steady the helm of the ship of the state and ride out triumphantly. More than four years of bloody strife where 400,000 patriots freely gave up, up their lives that prosperity might enjoy the liberties their forefathers left to them as a heritage. Do the young Americans appreciate what a glorious country the lives of these 400,000 men saved for them? I think they do. On April 21st, 1898, war was declared against Spain. We then had a standing army of less than 25,000. President McKinley called for troops to go to Cuba to fight to maintain the honor of our home and country. How willing did the young men enlist and rush to the call. Our own Wyoming, mark me, was the first state to report for duty with her full quota of troops, and all the other states responded so fast that the general government was unable to furnish guns fast enough for them. In just nine days after the war was declared, Dewey surprised all Europe by totally destroying the Spanish fleet in Manila Bay without the loss of a single man. Following close upon this came the charges of the American volunteers at El Caney, where the Spanish arms again met defeat. Other battles followed in rapid succession until July 3rd, when the Spanish fleet commanded by Admiral Severa, a man who the world looked upon as the greatest naval officer living, seeing the hopelessness of the Spanish cause, attempted to save his fleet by fighting his way to the high sea. The result was another victory for the United States and the destruction of the remainder of the fleet of which Spain was so proud. 
Such fighting was never known before. The world looked on in awe. The people of this country have always been patient and long-suffering under a wrong. Though ours is a mighty nation, our people are slow to wrath. But there is no land in which the honor of the nation is so dear. There is no other place on this globe where the love of country, liberty, and justice is so strong. There is no other nation whose citizens would sacrifice so much to maintain its institutions or defend its soil. Notwithstanding the occasional murmur of discontent, but let a single drumbeat be heard on our coasts announcing the approach of a foreign foe, and there would again spring to arms the grandest army the world ever saw. This is the 30th anniversary of this great Memorial Day and the birth of the perpetual liberty. It is a holy day consecrated to grateful and sacred duties we owe our forefathers and our nation's defenders. They gave their lives that we might enjoy the blessings of liberty and inherit the world's first grand free republic. And as we are assembled here today, to pay our humble tribute of love and patriotism and to cherish their memories, the thought that fills our heart is that the flag they saved at the cannon's mouth is the flag that waves over us still. The 30th day of May is a grand day in the history of civilization. The Grand Army of the Republic has left us a grand heritage. Have we the manhood the wisdom, the ability, not only to perpetuate the nation, but to continue to advance in civilization and improve upon all we have inherited. I believe we have. And in return for these priceless privileges, it should be our first duty as a nation to free ourselves from vice and inculcate the holy principles of virtue. And now it remains for us the present and the rising generation to harmonize our customs, shape our principles, and conduct our professions so that if future generations do not live in the grandest, freest, and best republic on earth, the blame shall not be ours. From the earliest pages of history, from the dawn of civilization to the present day, we see both banks of the stream of time strewn with the wreck of cities, nations, and empires, the remnants of Egypt and Carthage, the ruins of Athens, the crumbling stones of the once mighty Rome, are now but warnings of their folly. They are but wrecks on the sea of progress to warn succeeding ages from the rocks. Let us so live that no nation in the future can point to us as we now refer to those. May we be wisely warned by the errors of the ancients and prove ourselves worthy descendants of honored sires. There are in this audience some of the men who helped preserve this union. I never met one without having a patriotic impulse of kindness. Many of my friends, as well as myself, responded to Lincoln's first call and did our duty until the close of the war. The most of the boys who went with me has slept for many years in a soldier's graves with nothing to mark the spot. They may not be fully appreciated by this generation, but they will hereafter rank with our revolutionary forefathers. When the last noble soldier of the GAR shall be called to meet his comrades gone before, when he shall obey this last call and be summoned to a final camping ground in the silent city beyond. May he in peace and happiness see that they have not suffered in vain, and when we gather around his pillow to soothe his final moments, may the grandeur of Columbia cause joy to conquer the pain of desolation. And when this gallant soul crosses the silent river, may his proud report to his waiting comrades be 
that our sons are true to the trust we imposed upon them in our union, the castle of liberty. Let us profit from the lesson of the past and garner the golden sheaves of experience and enshrining above all else our national integrity, press onward with renewed vigor to the goal of national perfection, devoting our vast energies to the advancement of liberty and learning. We shall draw after us the blessings of an enfranchised race and shape aright the coming centuries and send forth an influence that will eventually liberalize the world. For such I believe to be the mission of this government, not only to be among ourselves a free, intelligent, united, and happy people, but to send forth an influence that will prove fatal to imperialism and oppression throughout the earth. And by force of example, introduce free republicanism as a universal form of government. If this be the mission of our nation, millions yet unborn will hail with swelling hearts the anniversary of the day dedicated to the sacred memory of the birth of our nation and our nation's defenders. For it is not ours alone to sing the notes of liberty. Each day, each month, each year, will add glad voices to the chorus, and age succeeding age will swell the glad refrain until earth becomes resonant with the hallelujah of freedom. <laughs>